Hello my dear inventors, good to see you back on our channel. I am working as an embedded software engineer and I have often been asked this question of what does an embedded software engineer do? Well, let's find out. So what kind of software do we prepare? How are they different from other software engineers? What do they look like? What is the skill set needed to become one? We are making this video to explain what we embed software engineers do, how we do it, varieties of software we use, skills needed to develop each kind of this software, types of the companies you get to work for, and other relevant details you might find interesting to give you an insider's look into this profession. So let's start. So what does an embedded software engineer do? Let me try to give you a simplified answer first. Uh, so the simplified answer would be an embedded software engineer develops software that runs on devices like microwave oven, Xbox controllers, blood pressure monitors, Bluetooth headphones, smartwatches, and other such devices that has custom hardware. Let's get into a little bit more details so that we get an understanding what it is to be an embedded software engineer. We have made a separate video on what embedded systems are, how they differ from regular computers and what are the different types of embedded systems. The link of that video is given below in the description. Check that out if you haven't already. Let's have a look at some types of software that are considered as embedded. There are several types of embedded software and they can be broadly classified into four types. The types are embedded bare metal software engineer, embedded Linux software engineer, embedded RTOS software engineer, and embedded networking software engineer. These different embedded softwares need a specific skill that we need to be expert in. Big companies often hire engineers who are experts in one of the given skill set, while the small companies need engineers who are jack of all the above mentioned traits. Although each variety needs a unique set of skills. Let's check some skills which are common in all types of embedded softwares. Good mastery of C and C++ programming, debugging skills using oscilloscope and logic analyzers, experience with version management tool like JIT. Now let's go ahead and take a brief look at each type of embedded software. So the first one is embedded bare metal software, aka embedded software. This is the simplest type of embedded system, which does its job without an operating system. All other type branched out of this one. Even though the entire software running on these systems look simple, they are actually the hardest to design. Since there is no operating system present here, everything needed by the application from the driver to schedules must be designed and developed by the software engineering team. That's where you come in. It is called bare metal because of the fact that the software we write runs directly on the chip by manipulating the control registers and reading the status registers. Also, since the entire code is written for a specific application, the resulting system will be much more responsive and efficient compared to the all above mentioned systems. What are the skills needed to develop embedded bare metal software? Developing embedded bare metal software requires a good understanding of microcontrollers and its peripherals. Ability to read data sheets 
and working with registers and manipulating bit level data. The other skills which is required is assembly programming. Used rarely, but an understanding of how it works is very important. Another one is system architecture. Next is software engineering principles. As there are no operating system to guide us to design around it, we must adhere to good software engineering principles of code of uh, modularity and data abstraction. And the last one is processor architecture. Embedded Linux software. Linux is famous among embedded engineers as it is an open source operating system with a customizable kernel. This means anyone can make their own operating system to suit their particular needs by keeping just the necessary parts. Thus, keeping the size small yet support their device's functionalities. Then, on top of the kernel, they can make their own application code to make an embedded device. Some famous examples of porting Linux to embedded devices include Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, and Justin devices. This reduces the development time and costs so much compared to building your own embedded operating system. What are the specific skills needed to develop embedded Linux software? Developing embedded Linux software needs knowledge about the following. Linux kernel development, Linux driver development, Linux application development, file systems, operating system concepts like scheduling, queues, power management, and memory management. Illumix.org, a dedicated community for embedded Linux, recommends getting these books to learn more about the development of embedded Linux. RTOS software. What are real-time systems? Real-time systems act predictable to events. Their main characteristics is the fact that they will react to event within the specified time constraint. Let's take a simple example of your computer keyboard. To understand what real-time systems are, when you are typing something, you expect the letter to appear on the screen as soon as you type it. If the word comes in even within a two second of delay, then it is going to be a bad experience using your device for the end user. So the time constant here is few milliseconds, which cannot be perceived by the normal human senses, so that the end user will feel like the letter you just pressed magically appeared on the screen. What are the specific skills needed to develop embedded RTOS software? A good understanding of RTOS principle needs skills like task management, heap memory management, queue management, software timer management, interrupt management, and resource management. Embedded network software. A major part of any embedded software is not generating data. It is rather to transfer data from one module to another. In other words, to make two modules talk to each other. Networking is given a special category in embedded software because they involve a specific talent set that's needed to develop and manage custom network stacks. Some examples of network stacks include Ethernet stacks, Wi-Fi stacks, and Bluetooth stacks. A good understanding of these stacks in terms of how they work and a good understanding of network security is important to develop devices that are robust, safe, and secure. Example of such devices can include smartwatches that connect to our devices via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, Bluetooth headphones, and speakers, and other wearable text. What are the skills needed to develop embedded networking softwares? 
developing embedded software on the network stacks need knowledge about the following. Basic networking principles, network security principle, Ethernet stack, Wi-Fi stack, Bluetooth stack, ZigBee and Z-Wave protocol for home automation, ANT plus protocol for health industry, networking devices like switches, routers, IDS, IPS and firewalls. So these are the main skills we need to build and embedded networking softwares. If you don't have a college course on networking, I would suggest you to go for industrial certifications as a way to get your basics strong in networking. In the future video, I will cover some choices for the certifications as well. If you're watching this video late, maybe it's already available. Please check out our channel for that. Types of companies you get to work for. Any company that produces electronic devices with a microcontroller is going to need embedded software to run on it, be it an airline, automobile, home appliances, smartphones, laptops, and medical devices. They all use microcontrollers in their end products, and thus they need embedded developers and you. Some famous examples of such companies in your near neighborhood are Nokia, Apple, Samsung, LG, and HP. Now the fun part. A typical week in the life of an embedded software engineer. An embedded software developer's week typically consists of the following main activities. The first one is team meetings. Team meetings to discuss the architecture of the next feature to be installed in the next release. Coding down the discussed features. Testing the new features as the new features will inevitably introduce bugs on the previously working features. Some more discussions and debates on what caused the bugs and which is the best solution for the bug. Fixing the bug and releasing the software. If you would like to learn more about Embedded System, visit our website embeddedinventor.com. If you have any questions and suggestions for the future video, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I will see you inventors in the next one.